everyone. I was just going to say good morning, but you could be it could be good morning or good night or good evening wherever you are. But welcome to Marriage Culture TV. I am Nikio and I'm Queen Ashley. Okay, and we are here to talk about having a great support system, setting up a support system in this world that we live in having a good support network is so important it is so vital um one of the things that we see a common theme for anywhere you go globally is just this theme of selfishness and we already know that no man is an island we all need people around us that are strong that can help us in whatever area you might have a friend who might be um just a good listener and sometimes that's all we need someone that will just listen to us while we talk while you might have someone who is going to stay on your back and make sure that you you know you stay focused for whatever you're doing and we just think that in this time and in the season that we're in having a good support system is one of the best things that you could ever think about um one of the examples that comes to mind for me um is Moses and remember Moses when he was they were fighting um if i'm almost sure after you got to help me out with this one i think it was in exodus oh, yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so he was fighting and um they were winning the battle but every time his arms went down they um they were losing and his supporters the people that was there for him were like moses we got you you know they made sure that he sat down and then they held his arms up so that the battle for the israelites could be won that day and that's the kind of support network that we're thinking about people that will be there with you you know they said when the going gets tough the tough gets going or something like that mm -hmm. or, i think that's what it says um I'm just trying to paraphrase, you know, you want people that are going to be around you, you know, whether you're in a good situation or in a bad situation, mm -hmm. these are the kind of support network that you need to have. Queen? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like backing it up a bit, you also, um, you want to, you want to have expectations for a support network. Like, what is it that you need from them? What are you expecting? Like on a professional level, I remember once the pandemic started and um, started working from home. For me, it was the first time. Right. Um, and it was a new job. So here I was just finished um, orientation. I was 30, how many days out? 90 days out. Wow. And then we all had to go to work so we got our computers got our cell phones and you know i was told you have to go home and set up office um i did that but i felt very isolated i felt because i was still kind of new I, I was a newbie um and still like learning the ropes and the culture of this new company um i felt a little bit alone and not sure if um what i was doing was enough and was kind of uh not so I guess I had a little bit of hesitation in reaching out. And finally, I did. I actually had to reach out um, to one of the um, leaders on my team. And I'm like, hey, I need support here. Like, I need feedback. <laughs> I need, you know, I, I just needed some, a, a little bit of, of, of like a professional um, right. assistance. And he jumped right in. And he's like, you know what, Ashley, you're so right. And I'm wondering how many people are feeling like this because mm -hmm. we've never worked remotely before. And so we're all you know, working in silos, whereas before we were all together in the office. Um, and so from then we started to have daily meetings, daily check-ins. Um, they lasted 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, but that is what kind of got the ball rolling and made people not to feel so alone. So really um, one of the first things you want to do is to define what it is that you need or to have your expectations of what it is that you need from your network. That was just one example of a professional need. Yeah. And as you were saying that, I was just um, thinking about, you know, how, how many times we find people that are in leadership positions, per se, mm -hmm. that they feel so isolated. Because a lot of times the people that are surrounding you might not necessarily be a part of your support system. So what they do is they they set they step back, they look at you and they're waiting for you to make mistakes. You know, they judge you, they criticize you mm -hmm. instead of being there to help you, you know, which is where your support system um, comes in place. And like Queen said, you know, having a good support system in your work environment is very vital. But, you know, as married women, you also want to have good support systems at home. Your spouse can be one of your greatest support system ever. You know, that's a person who you're going to spend most of your time with. So you just want to make sure that, you know, 
your 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 spouse understands what you need you also understand what your your spouse needs so that you can support each other in the different roles that you might be playing in that environment queen yeah absolutely i agree and um you know another thing is um you know i talked about like reaching out but it's really and i want to stress this um too people don't know what's going on in your mind and I, sometimes it's easy for us to like go into our little shell and we're going through things that only we may know about. Even your spouse may not know that you're having some kind of issues internally that you're not voicing concerns. Maybe you need help yeah. around the house. Maybe you need help with the kids. Maybe the work is too much. And if he himself or she can't help, then he may look at um, contracting out help to come in and clean or, you know, or a babysitter once a week. And then you rely on your family members or trusted adults um, or p professional babysitting service just to give you time so that's one way of building a support network at home is to first you got to ask for help let people know that hey i'm overwhelmed can you assist me here and let them know that you're part of that that they're part of that network so that they can be there for you on the flip side too you should also um be willing and able to lend assistance when needed because if all you're doing is taking 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 then you can become a leech now, that may be necessary for a time for you just to be receiving, but in a marriage, it's give and take. You know, sometimes you got to be the support. Well, you're always a support network, um, uh, part of the support network for your spouse. But sometimes, you know, you may need to be leaned on a little bit more. There may be a season when, you know, your spouse may need um, to lean on you and, and vice versa. So, but the, it, it starts with communication, really, and communicating what the needs are and, you know, working a game plan to get that support. I like that. You have to have that big communication in. And um, like Queen was saying, um, you know, your support system um, not only comes from your spouse, but it can also come from your friends. It can also come from your family members. You know, like we said earlier, no man is an island. And, you know, one of the most famous sayings that we have, which is absolutely true, it says that, you know, um, it takes a village to raise, raise, raise a child, you know, and, um, one of the scriptures that I like in the Bible, it says, you know, behold, how, how pleasant and, and good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yes, so yes. one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you're choosing your support system very wisely. It's better to have three or four friends that you can count on than to have a hundred or say, oh my God, I have so many friends. Oh, I know this person. And just have so many people around you that are mere acquaintances and they're not there that will definitely support you when you need that person. You know what I'm saying? So instead of trying to be friends with everybody, choose your friends wisely, you know, choose the people that when you look on them, you know that maybe you can call them, you can depend on them for whatever the reason is, and they're there for you and hone in on that. So when you need that great support, like she will say, maybe you just need to take a breather, you know, and you can call this person or that person and know that, hey, they understand, they know me, they know exactly what I'm going through. And I can depend on them in that time or in that season that I really and truly need them to be that support system for that time of my life that I'm in. Queen? Yeah, I, I, and actually I was thinking, you know, though you're talking about having like trusted advisors, sometimes our support yeah. network can, can be in a, in, a, in a sense, a larger community, but not the inner core, right? Right. So like I'm referring to now, Say you have an interest in cooking and you want to take a cooking class. There used to be a website and or an app. I'm not sure if it's out there. I think it's called Meetup or something like that. And it was an interest-based app. So in my church specifically, like we have interest, interest groups. Okay. So if it's running, so they have people that love to run or walk. And so they would say, we're meeting at this park at this hour on a Saturday morning. And so people would go there. That's one way of interacting and, and getting some kind of support in a health and fitness journey. Another one, maybe gardening or cooking, you know. Soap. Reading. It was actually a soap. Um, no, this was a, um, I went to a card making class. And I was like, I am not an artsy person at all. But I found so much fun in it. It's like how to make um, greeting cards and personalize them and make them very pretty cheap and unique like something i would spend top dollars for at uh target i don't know how to make um so it was nice fellowshipping like you said don't forsake the fellowship of brethren um and then having like you know chit chat amongst friends now it wasn't anything intimate that we talked about 
But just having that little outlet, that social outlet really did a lot for the mind. And I came home feeling so refreshed. So there's so many groups there, special interest groups. If it's not in your church, you can reach out and see what's in your community and just tap into that. Um, it, it really will go a long way for building a support network in a, in a different angle, one that is not so intimate. Yeah, and I know we were talking um, recently, we were just saying that the way the world is going, it wants you or the enemy wants you to be, um, I'm going to say it's the enemy, wants you to be um, isolated, self-isolated. So you find yourself in a little group of maybe just you and your spouse or you and a friend and you're shut off from everyone. You know, um, the enemy tries to give you reasons why you shouldn't speak to your, your family members or be involved in your church environment, not be, be involved, like you said, in these little groups that you could have, you know, that way, you know, you're, you have people around you. So when you're going through certain things, you know, you don't feel that self-isolation, which, which can lead into so many things, anxiety, fear, depression. So you're all alone. And then the best friends nowadays that you notice for most of the next generation, I'm going to say Generation Z um, fa family or couples is the Internet. You know, what does the Internet say about this? What does the Internet say about my child? Yeah. What does the Internet say about, you know, um, my marriage instead of finding people who have gone through what you've gone through, been where you've been, making them a part of your support system. That mother in the church that maybe had like seven or eight kids, your own mother who has had you and other people, if you have a relationship with them, your siblings, your older brother or sister or a friend that you had or your, you know, is in your environment that you trust and you sit down and speak with. Generation Z now, it's like, hey, it's just me. It's us you know, you can tell us what you want to tell us, but we're going to go on the internet and find out. And that's, that's going to be our, that's their biggest, what should I say? Self know how to do whatever they want to do book. But, you know, it's in, in, in the way I think we are made up as human beings. It's, it's good to have support systems, however it may be, or wherever you find yourself going into her mode never usually helps anyone. Of course, there's a time when you have to set yourself up aside from everyone, you know, and and do what you need to do, um, you know, and self-evaluate. But living like that, you know, and trying to raise a family, mm. being in a marriage that you've never been in before, maybe having your first child or even your first grandchild, you need to have a support system around you. You need to be able to interact with others. And if you don't, you can always build a good support system a good network, you know, just depending Absolutely. on what you're looking for and just making sure that you answer certain questions that are necessary or needed for your everyday life. Queen. Yeah. So, and lastly, I just want to touch on the, I can't emphasize enough, um, professional, um, counseling therapy, um, psychotherapy. I, um, they do a lot Therapists are not your friends. <laughs> They're not your family members. They're professionally trained individuals that know how to help you navigate tough and difficult um, situations that you may be facing um, and and just help you to think think through, you know, kind of, they, they ask probing questions that it, it's kind of weird how they will ask some probing questions and allow you to, as you're answering them, sometimes you have have the answers to the question that you've had or you know you call it the solution but they're not your friends um and they're not your family members now i'm not you can definitely get good advice from them i have a therapist and i see ever so often and it has done a lot of good you know in in my thought process i have an outlook on life as a christian counselor that was a i was a, just gonna say that make yeah. sure it's christian counselor yeah criteria of mine because everything that you know if it's not biblically based then i i don't want i don't want to hear it um and so that helps there's some pastors that are really good counselors as well so never um underestimate the power of of going to to, to and there's it's not, it's not a taboo to go speak to a therapist i know in some cultures it may be but really it does it does help a lot i don't have any other addition, Nikki, do you? I like what you said. You said in some cultures, it's not. But think of your therapist, like you were saying, you know, like there's certain um, criteria that you need to have, even for any person that you're going to confide in, which is what a therapist is. It's a confidence. You know, instead of going to Auntie A or Auntie B, you yeah. know, look at your therapist as that person, you yeah. know, 
that you can go to and they're going to ask you the questions that maybe nobody else will ask you and make you self-evaluate like Athlete was saying and think mm -hmm. about it, you know, and they're not going to be picking your side like maybe Auntie B will do or Uncle A, you right. know. They're, they're giving you rational and practical um, ways of um, navigating through some difficult situation or circumstances. And homework. Oh. And they give you homework. <laughs> they just love to give you homework. <laughs> and they're good exercises. <laughs> so just think about that. You know, so um, like Queen said, you know, they're not, don't think of, of them as your enemies. They're not. They will really help you, especially with everything that's going on in our world today. You need a good support system and making a therapist a part of it is not a, is not a bad idea at all. Yeah. At all, at all. Yeah. Queen? So we want to thank you once again for joining us and, yes. and giving us through our little chit chat of um, establishing a support network. And we really hope that you find this information useful. And we really hope that this will be the boost that you needed to, to start to build that support network yes. and reach out and also be a part of someone else's support network. Um, you know, because we need each other. We Absolutely. need each other and we need to rely on each other. So um, again, I am um, Queen Ethelene. I'm Nikki O, and if you have not hit that button, please make sure you do like, share, subscribe, okay? Until we see you again, have an awesome day. Bye.